really the mark of a good cook nowadays is how she roasts the carrot. And you'll see that in restaurants. Who pick great fried and, and how they're roasting the carrot. Um, and they're, they're doing them all these fanciful ways. But in a lot of uh, fancy restaurants now, you'll see uh, a roasted carrot salad built up every which way. And so this is a little bit of a side dish, kind of like a roasted carrot, but it's also could be a salad if you treat it a different way. And um, so we'll get started. I'll show you this technique. You can cut your carrots any way you want. Um, if I had some smaller farm market carrots, you know, purple or, or red or orange, I would probably leave them whole, and I would actually keep them unpeeled um, after I wash them. And the reason why is that uh, if they're fresh from the ground and the peels aren't too tough like this, uh, they actually give it a nice texture and, uh, and they'll protect the carrot to keep it really, really juicy as it grows. Uh, the beauty of this is that if you like coins, you can do it in coins. Uh, if you like to just have your carrots, you can do that. Um, what I'm going to do today is uh, what I call a granny cut um, or a roll cut. And um, the other great thing about it is there's no wrong way to do it. I was packing up my uh, kitchen equipment yesterday morning before I got on the plane uh, to come here for the weekend. And uh, I started putting my bowls and my knives and, uh, and my cast iron skillet in a suitcase. I said, why am I bringing the cast iron skillet from Birmingham to North Carolina? So thank you, Faye, for all of your kitchen equipment. <laughs> The other beautiful thing about doing this uh, chicken and cast iron skillet, just like bacon, um, I think cast iron skillet, cast iron gets better the more you use it. Not to be too cheesy about it or too hooky about it, but I think cast iron has a, a bit of soul. So when you see that soul and when you put things like chicken thighs or bacon in it, um, it gets better. It, it gets a patina. And when you pour that uh, fat out and you uh, rinse it under hot water, um, and then you wipe it down and put it back on your stove. The more times you do that, the better the surface is going to be, and you won't ever have to re-season uh, or put it oil on it in the oven. All these lodge skillets come um, factory feeding, and I went to the factory last year to check it out, and the whole thing is they have the two handles for, for two hands. Skillets come down a conveyor belt and uh, they go through a almost like a spray can shower, and that's the seasoning. Um, so you don't have to season them when you get your back. Um, if you want a recipe for seasoning, email me and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell you how to do it. That was in Southern Movie. But, um, well, another, another thing about Lodge, you know, as we're talking about American-made products, I don't think there's a better cooking utensil made in America um, than a lodge skillet. You know, they've been around for 100 plus years. South Pittsburgh, Tennessee is where they, they're located. Um, and, uh, the, so chicken's doing well. Um, here's what we're going to do with our carrots. So I start from this end, the small end. And I just start here, and I roll it a quarter turn. Another quarter turn, and just keep going. And I really want uneven, oblong shapes, and I'll show you why. So all of these different sides and shapes mean that the carrots are going to sit on the roasting pan different ways. Some are going to be pointing up, some are going to be pointing down. Uh, I like them very uneven because if you give them a different texture as they roast, and they're going to take on different colors. The other way you can do this is go one way and then come the other. And like I said, it really doesn't matter how you do it, as long as they're fairly uniform.
classic with a vinaigrette. <coughs> and uh, you could also do this with garlic. It's really good, um, but stronger. And so for the sake of this, we'll probably do uh, a half of a shallot. Because <coughs> my bowl is really small. Allium. 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 Yeah. And, and allium family, that's a fancy way of saying onions and, uh, and garlic and chives. Uh, and ramps, if you're at a ramp. Oh, the mountain ramps, yeah, that's, that's an allium. So I slice my um, shallots just like I slice an onion. Come across and then down. There are no rules for shallots either, though. You can slice it any way you want. What we're going to do with the shallots is uh, we want to combine the shallot and the acid, in this case the lemon juice first. And the acid's going to temper the shallot and, uh, and mellow it out a little bit. And it's also going to draw out some of the flavor, extract some of the flavor, so that goes into the vinaigrette. So we're also going to add a little bit of salt, and that's going to help draw out some of the, uh, the flavor. And when, typically when you're making a vinaigrette, you would let this sit for about five minutes. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and, and uh, whisk some stuff together. And uh, I always eyeball it, and then what I do is then I just adapt it and, or adjust the flavor. And what I would typically do with this too, um, got some sugar in the back. <coughs> We're also going to add a little bit of Dijon mustard. And Dijon is great in a uh, vinaigrette because it helps, uh, it helps you get a little more of an emulsified look. You know, the big thing with the vinaigrette is and it's great to make them in jars so you can shake them really well. Uh, the, the mustard acts as an emulsifier, meaning it makes it go a little bit creamy. If you ever make homemade mayonnaise, Add a little bit of Dijon uh, mustard at first, and it'll help everything come together. And it's as simple as that. And then from here, you adjust the flavors, salt, pepper. Um, I, when I'm using Dijon, I'll oftentimes add a little teaspoon or two of honey um, to mellow everything and give it and round out the, the sharp edges. And then the beautiful thing about this is that um, if it's in your jar in the fridge, um, the oil will separate, it will sit on top, um, it will probably congeal uh, at the temperature in the fridge, and it will basically preserve the vinaigrette. You know, you're going to have that acid that's going to continue to break down the, uh, the shallot, but you can keep it for a week, you can really keep it for two weeks in, in, the, uh, in the fridge, it'll be fine. Um, but it's because that oil is, is acting as a seal. And 
so to finish this dish, um, we would drain these vegetables, put them on some paper towels, dry them off a little bit. You don't want too much water. It's going to uh, dilute the, the strength of the dressing and everything's going to fall off it. <coughs> and toss that with some of the dressing. And uh, you can finish with some nuts. Uh, we put almonds on this one and a little bit of shaved radish, which is a little bit of an embellishment. Um, and the way that I do my shaved radishes is with a uh, micro or is with a mandolin, which is this is a Japanese mandolin. Um, it's a great tool, but you got to be careful. Um, and when I'm doing this, I go halfway. I keep the, the, uh, the little tails and the radishes up. I just hold it by that. Um, and I love radishes this time of year. The thing about the micro plants, you can, you can cut them any width you want, any thickness you want, and you're good to go. And so that is the... Uh,